So now in section three, we're going to talk about developmental niche. Uh, developmental niche is all about culture. It's just basically talking about what is culture and how it can impact children's developments. Here you can see a good picture of uh, the impact. For example, um, language. This is so important. The way people actually talk and communicate uh, can be different from culture to culture and it can impact children's development. Uh, for example, in some uh, cultures, children raised to be shy and uh, not asking any questions from other people, even teacher. That can bring low self-esteem in them. Yet, in some other cultures, uh, such as Western cultures, uh, children raised to be high, um, high in confidence and just asking so many questions. They don't care if it is a teacher, if it is a professor, or if it's like a dean. They're just asking their own question and they are fine with that. This is part of their culture. Another point can be uh, the way children uh, gonna dress. It is different from culture to culture, right? Uh, for example, in some cultures, the way girls gonna dress is just different from boys from the beginning. In some cultures, they have to wear hijab, like a head scarf. Yet, this is not the case in other cultures. Another point can be food. I already mentioned that, for example, in some religions, um, you cannot eat pork or you cannot just um, have meat at all. Yet, uh, in other religions, you can just have everything you want, right? Uh, jokes. This is very important because like I'm coming from a culture that we are laughing a lot. This is just being funny and just be yourself and just don't uh, take yourself seriously. It's just part of Iranian culture. So basically, we're going to joke a lot um, and we are just laughing all the time in my family, which is not the case um, in other cultures because I do have some friends um, that they are just so serious in talking to their dad and their mom, which is not the case for me. So we can see that there are some cultural differences here and there, and it can impact children development as well. Today, we're gonna to talk about three of them. Uh, the first one gonna be physical setting and condition of daily life. Second one gonna be childcare customs. And the third one gonna be child rearing beliefs and goals. So let's be more specific. Here you can see that physical setting and conditions of daily life can be diet, can be healthcare, can be education available, can be types of home, choice of activities of young children. I love child care customs because like I feel like it is so funny how it can be different from person to person. Uh, one hot debate here is um, child proofing versus uh, child containment. Another can be co-sleeping because like some parents, they do believe that they want to sleep with their infants, but others uh, prefer to just uh, separate uh, their kid from the beginning, from literally day one, which is crazy. And everybody has its own reason, which I do respect. But um, that's kind of funny. That's how people can be different. Another point can be child rearing uh, beliefs and goals. For example, when do you potty train? Um, is the goal um, is having an independent child or you want to have loyal and obedient child? This is also such an interesting point. Um, last semester, I had uh, 45 students. And it was so funny because like 27 of them, they were coming from military household. Like they literally had a dad or a mom who were working in a Marine or Army or just some other places. And they said that they had just some specific schedule from day one, from the beginning. Uh, they didn't feel comfortable at all sharing uh, with their parents because they were just so specific. They are just kind of harsh. So it was just so hard to communicate with them. Um, and parents, they, they wanted like obedient kids. 
and they were not like that. So it was really interesting um, talking to them. And I feel like it might be the case for some of you as well. Here is some examples about child proofing and child containment. For example, if you want uh, your child to explore, of course, you can do child proofing, but you have to secure the environment. It might be dangerous because, I mean, it has its own cost, right? And it's um, it can be expensive as well because, like, I mean, yeah, let's be honest, it's expensive. Child containment, it is um, about just uh, having a playground for your kids and you can just work here. That's totally fine. And you can just buy it like for $50 from Amazon. So it is safe. It is uh, affordable and it can let you like to work in the same environment and watch uh, your kids. However, it can cause trauma, anxiety and some other problems. I remember once uh, a student asked me what kind of trauma it can bring uh, for the kids. It's just so safe, it's just so good. My answer is some children, uh, they do have problem to be in a specific area. And whenever you put them in um, that kind of situation, they would cry and they are getting anxiety. So you have to, I mean, you don't know what is the child's background, but you have to consider that um, if you want to have like a playground or child containment or not, because like you want to have a healthy child, like mentally healthy child. So it depends on the child situation. You might use one of those or both if you want. Another point about culture is the way children dress. Like we know that it just changed a lot. Here you can see the girl has a skirt. However, nowadays you cannot understand if the baby is a she or a he. I'm talking about my own cousin. Uh, the way she dresses is just crazy because because uh, like she loves Spider Man, and like eighty percent of the time she is just wearing Spider Man costumes. So I'm like, okay, are you a girl or are you a boy? And um, her parents actually believe that. Uh, she is gender neutral. So, I mean, nowadays parents are just so open-minded and they let uh, their child to dress uh, whatever they want. Another point is about education. Um, I am so happy that uh, in most of the countries, at least, uh, children are allowed to have education and um, they have like equal opportunity to just go to school, but before uh, it was just kind of frowned upon for girls. And um, yeah, that was so sad. I didn't like that. Here is the idea of gender. So like you can see, we have boy, we have girl here, and we have gender neutral. Whenever you wanna actually think about the idea of gender, you can just imagine my cousin. Uh, who is actually dressing like Spider-Man and she's basically gender neutral. Another point about developmental niche is games, activities, and interaction. You can see here before the type of games are just so different. They were just a bunch of children. They were just playing somewhere and they were going crazy. Yet nowadays, um, this is actually kind of uh, dreamy because nowadays every child has a tablet or an iPad and they are just uh, playing some games by themselves. They don't care about anyone. So the type of games and interaction is just changing as well. So the perception of children across time is just changing and changing and it is kind of uh, depending uh, on the culture as well. For example, like I said, in some culture, um, having a high self-esteem, it just encouraged, like, let's say Western culture. Yet in some other cultures, for example, Eastern culture, being polite and being shy, it's actually being shy, just a sign of being polite or working so hard means like you are a good person. However, in some other cultures, they prefer to just work smart like they would just work like four or five hours, but they have like some plans for that five hours. Yes, in just 
some other cultures, they prefer to just work 12 hours to just show off and just uh, say that, oh, we have like high level of work ethics, uh, which I do re respect that. But I mean, it is all about differences between cultures and how it can just influence children's development.